drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Bloods. The problem with the world is that everyone is a few drinks behind. <laughs> Welcome to, I was Humphrey Bogart, by the way, oh. classical actor. Sorry. I was going to laugh no matter who it was. Well, I appreciate it. I'm glad sure. you like my fake quotes. Yeah, that was great. We're in the uh, world of fake news now, so my fake quotes are really taking root in That American was really society. fake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is episode uh, 86 of Brew Bloods. We are live today, at least live for us, not for you. Sure. At Noble Ray Brewing Company. We are live today. We are live. I don't know. I, I'm a recorded hologram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hologram. You are fake Mark. Yeah, I am fake Mark. <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with hologram Tupac later. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, we that's are, how big we are now in the Brew Bloods. We have holograms <laughs> of ourselves right. that travel <laughs> around DFW <laughs> and do recording. <laughs> so uh, we're at Noble Ray Brewing Company today. Is a or company today. Or comp- comp to DDF today. It's a cut today. Cut to today. Yeah. You can see the uh, vertigo dipper we had is already getting to me. <laughs> since I've had no food today. So I ate right before we came. Mark decided to go ahead and go on a fast for yeah. 24 hours so wa- he could get full water alcohol. Yeah. yeah. So Noble Ray is a uh, brew pub in the, des- uh, it's either the medical district or the design district. Yeah. Uh, we don't really know where, but we just decided <laughs> to, to declare it. It's, it's on a street called Farmington off of Medical District Road. Right, so but I think we're in the Design District. I think it's Design District, though, even but though it's off of Medical District Road. Maybe the Design District is just expanding outward and taking new territory. Maybe they're going like, to go to war with the Medical District. <laughs> maybe so. And eventually it will become, it's like, they will annex the Medical District. It's going to be like the new uh, Game of Thrones. The <laughs> exactly. last season of Game of Thrones will be the ever, the encroachment of the Medical District and the or the war between the Medical District and the Design District. Design the District is coming. Maybe we should start into a new TV show just for this idea. So such compelling TV. We should. Bunch of fashionistas going after a bunch of doctors <laughs> with no battles at all. Yeah. Just general city council discussions. <laughs> that and, and pithy remarks back and forth. It'll be like the second episode of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a lot of Senate debate. <laughs> Maybe we can get Ian McDermott back just to deliver all the great city council debates. Exactly. All the dialogue there. That sounds great. So he Noble Ray, Rawlings. Noble Ray in the state of Texas, and obviously we're getting hyper local because they don't distribute outside of Dallas, as far as I know. Um, they don't. We're extremely hyper local, but Noble Ray is a brew pub, and what that means for the state of Texas is, is they can actually sell their beer out of their own place. They can serve beer, and they can serve the beer from other breweries. So their their menu here, they've got about. Uh, Eight to ten of their own beers. I can't tell from here it's on tap. Twenty taps. I know. I'm gonna say of their own beers. No, I know. Yeah, it's and then they twenty have, taps, and I think they have eight or nine of their own. Yeah, and then they have uh, ten or eleven from other people like uh, yeah. Texas Ale Project, Lakewood, RAR, Pedicolas. a bunch of other local people. Yeah, although they do have a, a Deschutes Jubilee Ale on tap also. So they Deschutes, do Brain Dead. Yeah, you know, Brain Dead. Which is yeah. I'm just saying they're all local. Sure, aside yeah. from Deschutes. But uh, I was disappointed because I, I we haven't ever been here before, and I was expecting a full-on brew pub. That's what I've been told. Right. But I'm not having eaten, uh, aside from a smoothie earlier, my tum-tum was expecting some yummy food. <laughs> and we walked in, and the only food they've got are some croissants. Right. And so I'm stuck here. There's with some kind of stuffed baked items. There. Yeah, and I'm just not in the mood for some baked goods. Yeah. I was wanting maybe some nachos or uh some <laughs> some some real pub fair pulled park nachos or yeah yeah moist flavorful brisket sure things yeah. things like that but no i'm left anything you get in a normal pub right maybe some fish and chips so i'm just left with a uh, like a hungry child and you know starving africa he could in ethiopia goods, though. i literally <laughs> have desperate. i've i got so upset i stripped down like an ethiopian child and have flies buzzing around my head <laughs> with my uh belly Protruding. And the arms of an angel started Harder. playing, so they kind of like crossed over. <laughs> as soon as we walked in, Sarah McLaughlin started <laughs> kicked on in the on the stereo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so uh, we decided to come here today. We'd never been here. Um, we wanted to get out and try some of the new places because we always tend to go to some of the same places, the Pedicolas sure. and Lakewood, a, a good friend. And, over you and over know, again. I don't know if we've officially talked about it on the show, but our effort is to try to kind of go around to more locations yeah. in DFW. <laughs> Get out and about, kind of get some ambiance. Yeah, it's and uh, you know, if we happen to be able to talk to somebody that works here, that's great. Yeah. If we don't, whatever, we'll still review the area and talk about uh, you know some of the items they have. Yeah, uh, some of the libations they have to drink. 
It's uh, and, uh, and food if they have it. And food, if yeah. If we actually stumble on a place that actually has food, we'll talk about the food as well. <laughs> That's true. More than just pastries. Right. Come on. That'll be less important. But Noble Ray, at least give me some nachos or something. Yeah, that'll be less important. Even it's if it's like a popcorn machine. Maybe, how something. about a Fletcher's Corny Dog? Yeah. You know, you in honor That's of the, very uh, Fletcher DFW who guys. just died. That's of old man Fletcher who just died a couple weeks ago. Corny Dog Fletcher. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. Just just Bernie's Fletcher, old man Fletcher, and hand out some corn dogs. <laughs> right. But yeah, so. We're doing some in studio like we did before, yeah. and we're going to do some like this. Uh, but these aren't going to be like shorties. We're going to do our official yeah. full episodes oh, yeah. with brewery description. We're breaking uh, that. We're three different we're, segments. I'm, we're going to do the normal, but we're unloading our full exhaustive coverage yes, as we exactly. do every other episode. It's just on site. Just on site. Yeah, it's trying to break boundaries. It's a new year, new us. Exactly. We're trying to look fabulous. Get out and about. You know. And Trying to press break, the flush. Break Marcus out of the chair right. every now and again. That's right. Which that was quite an effort today. It was. It hurt had a lot. Scrape, we had yeah. to scrape him. Had to dope me up. With, scrape him off the chair. They had to dope me up with all kinds of roofies <laughs> and Michael Jackson propofol. It was a lot of blood. A lot of blood. Yeah. yeah buckets, a lot of blood. But, you know, we won't and I just that. woke up. Now, that, that happened like eight hours ago, and I just woke up as we pulled up to Noble Ray. <laughs> right, exactly. And I rolled out of the Wanting car. Notches. Yeah. Rolled out of the car naked. <laughs> Begging for nachos. Covered in sweat yep. and blood. <laughs> Begging so for nachos, yeah. With high EBV IPAs <laughs> instead. Right. That's right. <laughs> so what do you think of Noble Ray itself, aside from my extreme disappointment of having very little food? Well, that aside, I actually like the facility quite a bit. Um, the, they have a couple of unique things here that I think some other facilities could uh, implement, including having like a kind of a, it's not a large array of video games. Yeah. But, you know, having three or four video games over yeah, there, one of them being Ski Ball. I mean, that's kind of a cool... They've got an old Street Fighter machine, Street yeah. Fighter 2 machine, which is awesome. They've got an old Nintendo. I hope yeah. they have, like, Duck Hunt over there. That's maybe, true. Maybe Maybe Slalom. Systems, yeah. Or maybe... Uh, it's too bad that... I wish they had the full... Remember the Olympics uh, where you had the giant floor pad? Yeah. And you would run track on it? <laughs> I, I do wish they had that. that. Or the got whole a, track and field game where you had yeah. to spin the little thing on yeah. the controller and everything? They've got, uh, they've got a little miniature Ski Ball. Uh, yeah, they've ski got ball, another... They foosball. Arcade machine that has like multiple games on it. Yeah, which and, it's, uh, you know a lot of places have like cornhole and stuff. Yeah. But it's nice to have something a little bit. Yeah, it's, and Jenga. Yeah, but you know they mix it up right. a little bit and have some other things. It's, it's pretty cool. It, to it see. is nice to see to see a little, somebody change it up a little bit. And, and they have entered the uh, Texas bathroom debate by just making both of them both sexes and saying nice. screw it. Way way to go, Noble Ray. Yeah, very noble of you, Noble uh, Ray. Hey, very noble. There you go. Now I will say one thing I've always loved about Noble Ray is their artwork, and it's if you come here, it's on display. They, uh, their artwork is up everywhere, and when I say artwork, I mean their can artwork. Right. Uh, they can, though they don't bottle. But if you ever see it, like you can instantly tell a Noble Ray can from anybody else. Sure. Um, it must. I'm. It's got to be the same artist that does all their work. Uh, but they yeah, have. Very distinctive. I would. I would encourage you to look up something like the BA Baracus or the Off the Leash can from Noble Ray. The Off the Leash is um, very, very noticeable. And I'll try to. I, I have very notable, put up one say. picture on Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter right. of some of their artwork, but all their cans, they stack together to make a complete picture, which is cool. So right. the reverse of one can, the, the, the front and the reverse are two separate images that make one image. So when you stack them together, they make a complete image. And I'm wondering like what this one is here. They have one that's a Suicide Squad takeover. Do yeah. they have like a, a DC-sanctioned I don't set know. of artwork, or do that's they just question. say, screw it, we're going to do that? I'm guessing they're not big enough to attract DC's right. The ire of uh, DC's that's kind of my thought. They're just kind of running under uh, the radar. Yeah, the BA Baracus uh, is named after uh, BA Baracus from the A Team, right? Mr. T's character. They got uh, they got one that's off the leash. It's an Irish Red Ale that has their artwork is uh, yeah, and a machine mask. It's a yeah, it's a it's a gimp and a machine mask. Yeah. yeah, with I'm not sure what he's holding. Is it? I think it's a dog bowl with like. I, with popcorn or something in it or something. That's what it looks but like. But it looks like a dog bowl. Like it's if you like look, a broken chain look over there, the, the keg of the painted keg over there, you can see it's a full dog bowl. Right. Yep. So it's a gimp with a dog bowl, which is awesome. Yep. They have one that's the, uh, it's like a steampunk lady with a corset and looks like a robot grabbing her boob. Right, yeah. Uh, they, they've got some really, really cool artwork. And I, I love it. I, they're, they're definitely my favorite art, can artwork going. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. And uh, I, I love the name. Like They have some really great beer names, too, on top of that. Uh, they've got the uh, tears with the bride, bridesmaid, bridesmaids, bridesmaids tears. tears uh, says yeah. on, which it I says think on. would be funny if that was a goes. But yeah, yeah, they've they've got some uh, some really really they got they have some really really great branding here, and yeah, they, I think they they really stand out from the pack uh, locally on their branding. And they really they jump off the shelf, and I think they're better for it. Yeah, I would agree. It's nice to see something yeah. kind of innovative like that. And it's a pretty low key. 
tap room. I mean, it's yeah. There's a decent sized crowd here. It's not uh, overwhelming by any stretch. There's a lot of seating, which is nice. Sure. I think they could use a little more seating on some of these high top tables. Sure. Because um, some of them don't have any chairs at all. And for the ladies, they have purse hooks on every table. They so, do. Yeah. Uh, which I know my wife would love. She has to bring her purse hook uh, everywhere with her. I think that's a shared thing. Yeah. Yeah. They both would enjoy that. And I guess I could try to hang my backpack off it. You could. It would probably break it off. <laughs> probably yeah, would. You could. Probably so. But, uh, yeah, two thumbs up on the Noble Ray facility. Thumb up? Thumb up. Yep. All right. Uh, well, after this, we'll start talking about the beer today, and that is the Barampus. Sponsored by Barbaco Apparel. Barbaco Apparel is a San Antonio-based independent clothing line that caters to Texans and Texans at heart. To find out more about Barbaco Apparel or to buy your favorite taco tea, go to barbacoapparel.com. All right, today we're talking about Snowball Ray's Barampus, which is a technically a brown ale because it's based off the Baracus, which is their it brown is. ale. Yep. Uh, but this is a holiday beer. It's a spice beer. I know it's we're past the Christmas and holidays and festivals and all that, but every day is a holiday when you're listening to the Brewers. That's right, exactly, exactly. Anytime we're on the air, right? It's a, it's an audio. It's a federal holiday. It's a f- audio federal holiday. You should right. demand federal pay. You should <laughs> yeah. demand exemption from work. You are fake news, exactly. Uh, but we decided, you know, it's it. It only comes out once a year. We've uh, you've had it before. I have not. Yeah, you're not going to be able to find it much even around Dallas at this yeah. point. Uh, they still have it on tap here, but I don't yeah. know. Uh, I, I think uh, like good friend we were at a few weeks right. ago still has it. There's a few places that have it, but yeah. uh, it's going to be pretty hard. Now you yeah. might see it out there as the Baracus Holiday Special as well. That's true. So it depends on how they brand it, but it's really not the Baracus Holiday Special. I'm guessing it's named after Krampus. It is, the, yeah. Uh, which, by the way, if you haven't seen that uh, movie, that's a great holiday movie. It is. Uh, although, don't believe there's a Krampus two out there. That is not. It's not. Part it's of the not lineage. a sequel of to the awesome movie. Right. Exactly. Uh, don't be fooled. The, yes. ori- the original Krampus movie is awesome. Fight the power there. It's named after Baracus and Krampus. So, yes. Anyways, this is a uh, peanut butter beer. Uh, in theory, I mean, it's a brown ale that they've all used. Well, it's a holiday spice special. Holiday so spice. It, yeah. It, it does have peanut butter, but it also has allspice. It has cinnamon. Uh, it has nutmeg, I believe. All those. All those yeah. holiday flavorings. The description is uh, Brampus Spiced American Brown Ale. Not your usual holiday spice beer. This beer hits you with a robust mix of toasted malt flavor, full body, and balanced hops you have come to expect from our year-round Baracus. But wait, what is that coming down the chimney? It's the smooth taste of peanut butter mingling with holiday spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. Welcome to the party, fool. Yeah, so there you go. It is It is, it a, is Baracus base, but that's yeah. not the name of it. But they tossed but yes. in some spice and some peanut butter. They did. Now, uh, again, Noble Ray, kind of small, so they don't have the exposure uh, for something like a beer advocate, really, to give them a rating. Yeah. Uh, their bigger beers probably don't have a beer advocate rating, I would guess. They might, but uh, this one definitely doesn't. Uh, Rate Beer gives us an 89 out of 100, uh, and that's only on about a handful of reviews, probably about seven or eight reviews. Uh, and Untap gives it a 3.95 out of 5, so pretty pretty good little yeah, rating, pretty good, actually. pretty good ratings. Uh, some of their other beers that we talked, we briefly talked about, Moth the Leash, the Vertigo, which we had before. Vertigo which we had today before the, this one. Yeah, the, uh, it's a, their Dippa, which is uh, pretty highly rated. Yep. Uh, the Bridesmaids Tears, which is a Saison. The Baracus, which we just talked about. The Steampunk, the which is the got the artwork of the Steampunk lady in the corset with the robot grabbing her boob. Yep. And the uh, Golden Ray, which is they don't have on top here, which we were going to do, but it's a German Hefeweizen. Yes. So, I think we're probably going to win by doing this one, though. I, I hope so. Of course, wherever we are, we're winning. Well, just yeah, like true. Charlie Sheen. No matter what we're doing, we're winning. Nice cultural reference throwback to pre-AIDS Charlie Sheen from three years ago. Absolutely. Winning. <laughs> right. All right. Well, let's find out about the history of Noble Ray Brewing Company. Noble Ray Brewing Company was founded in 2012. It is the brainchild of founder and sometimes brewer Chris Regalot. Noble Ray classifies themselves as a forward-thinking brew pub and they are currently ranked as one of the best new brew pubs in North America. Being a brew pub allows Noble Ray to offer beers to go, or if you'd prefer, to have a beer on site in their tap room. They currently distribute to the DFW area only, but are looking to expand within Texas soon. They feature four year-round beer offerings. These include Sex in a Canoe, a light lager, Steampunk, a rousing steam lager, Off the Leash, a Texas Red Ale, and Vertigo, a full-bodied double IPA. 
Okay, the BJCP. This is officially for a Northern English Brown Ale. Uh, I went with that. I'm more Southern English. <laughs> well, I went with that because their commercial examples include Newcastle Brown Ale, which um, is more of your common brown ale, I guess, right. that people are used to. So that's what I went for. Uh, there's also single, uh, Southern English and Mild, which I, I'm i not familiar with those commercial examples. I think they're all mostly English labels. So. Right. Uh, the commercial examples, well, the overall impression of a Northern English is that it should be, it's drier and more hop-oriented than Southern English brown ales with a nutty character rather than caramel or caramel or caramel. Uh, commercial examples include the Newcastle brown ale, Sam Smith's nut brown ale, uh, the Witchwood Hobgoblin, the Alesmith Nautical Nut Brown, Avery Ellie's Brown Ale, and the Goose Island Nut Brown Ale. I didn't know Goose Island made a Nut Brown Ale. I okay. didn't either. I don't, know the, I don't know I've seen that locally. but No, me neither. So first up is aroma, as usual. The should be light, uh, a light, sweet malt aroma with toffee, nutty, and or caramel notes. A light but appealing fresh hop aroma of UK varieties may also be noticed. Very low to no diacetyl. I'm, yeah. I don't think I've had a beer yet that if... I don't want diacetyl over there. <laughs> right. Now, now, this one is overwhelmed by the fact that it has the peanut butter flavoring yeah. in it. So that is almost all you smell. In yeah, the aroma. it is. It's I like don't a smell, big vat of peanut butter. Yeah, there's, I don't smell any cinnamon or allspice there. No, me This neither. smells almost just like that uh, when we had the peanut butter uh, beer face-off. Yeah. It smells a lot like that no-label peanut <laughs> yeah, butter beer. Yeah, no-label, right. Which, uh, was a good, which is a good sign. Because I would that, agree. that no-label beer... Was damn damn good. The loser who I don't remember now because they're a loser. Yeah, who wants to remember that? <laughs> Did not smell as much like. Did it, not so. win as yeah. total disaster. Yeah, it was a total disaster loser. So <laughs> who cares? Let's just declare everybody who loses a total disaster. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's a good sign. I, right. I love that no label beer. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I agree. The appearance should be dark amber to reddish brown in color. Uh, it's this, definitely dark. It's a dark dark red. I mean, you can. It's so dark. You. I mean, we're. There's enough light in here. You can yeah. kind of see like a little bit of an amber tone. Yeah, it's, but it's mo- it's really dark. It's a dark. It is a dark red. So dark. It's like it's even darker than a lot of red ales are. Yeah, it's da- yeah, it's like a deeper brown. Yeah, with a red like a red tint. I yeah. would say like a really red tint, like yeah. coppery. It's like a coppery kind of color. It's kind of coppery. Yeah, That's, yeah, coppery is good. And finally, everybody's favorite category: flavor and mouthfeel. Mouthfeel is medium to light to medium body. And medium to medium high carbonation. Now, I will say on this, uh, appearance wise, carbonation this, is low. But yeah, carbonation is low. There's no, there's no head on these beers. No, it's that same where you have like a ring and a little bit of a yeah. island looking head on the top. But yeah, there's not much there. Can't tell in lacing because we've got full pints here. But right, uh, flavor should be gentle to moderate malt sweetness. No surprise with the brown with a nutty, lightly caramel character. A medium to dr- medium dry finish. So I'm guessing with the addition of lots of nuts in the way of peanut butter, it's going to be quite nutty. I would expect it to be nutty. Uh, I hope for a little bit of cinnamon allspice flavoring there. Yeah, uh, but we'll see. Uh, just, peanut butter might overwhelm it, though. Yeah, that's peanut just based, a strong flavor. It is. It is. I think you probably, although cinnamon is a very strong flavor on its own. True, it is. So it seems to me, it seems like those two flavors would almost, at least in a beer, be at complete odds with each other. Right. But I guess we'll, I guess we'll find out. I think we will. I, be weird, I refuse. Be, be weird if we didn't. I'm Let's just, just drink, end the show. I'm just gonna drink some water. You go ahead and drink it. <laughs> All right. Let's end the show. <laughs> I will say it's not as peanut butter around the nose as I expected. It's definitely in there. It's, and I think it. I think it's there more of an aftertaste almost. So to me, this is somewhere between low labels peanut butter beer and that total disaster of whoever they were. <laughs> this is uh, a better some Pennsylvania beer or something. Yeah, you know. this is a better representation of a peanut butter beer than that. Com- that complete oh, that was catastrophe. peanut butter jelly time. I think was the other one. With, uh, no label. No, that was the. Oh, was yeah, that? You're right. Yeah, you're right. I think that was the counter. Yeah. yeah, this is a better representation of that complete. Disaster of a beer. <laughs> now, the, the problem that one had, which I think this one might be suffering from just a slight bit, is it tastes a lot like peanuts. Yeah. But this one does, unlike that one, <clears throat> add some peanut butter flavor in there as well. It's just not, no label had like pure peanut butter flavor. Right. This one has kind of a nutty slash peanut buttery flavor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's somewhere in between. Yeah. So I think that I would like it to be maybe a little more true to peanut butter, but it is a little more nutty, like raw peanut. Uh, Kind of, it's kind of smells like peanut shells, yeah. And I would say the taste is somewhat representational of that as well. There is a little bit of um, there's a little bit of allspice flavoring and nutmeg in there though. Like yeah. I'm getting a little bit of that, and there's a little bit of cinnamon. Touch it's not, of cinnamon, although cinnamon's less than I would have expected. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's uh, underrepresented in this beer, I guess. Um, yeah. It's definitely the it's definitely more of a peanut butter beer than anything else. 
<clears throat> oh, peanut butter and regular peanuts. Yeah. Those are the prominent flavors. Um, but allspice is definitely there. It's, it's there. It's definitely there. And it kind of gives it, I think, it kind of, there's a, as far as hops go, you can definitely, it's definitely more hoppy than I would have expected as well. It's not overpowering, but it's got a little bit of a bitter edge to it. Yeah, especially for something that only has an IBU of 30. I mean, yeah. that's not... That's not nothing, so you yeah. should get a little bit, but yeah. It's that might, you know, the cinnamon might be bringing it out a little bit, because you know how cinnamon can be very sharp just on its own. That's true. Because, um, yeah. you know, like, I start the day by gagging Dustin awake with spoonfuls of cinnamon. Right. I put a funnel, while well, he's snoring, I, fun, I put a funnel into his mouth and he filled up with cinnamon. He makes me snort it and yeah. basically almost kills me every yeah, day. It's, it's yeah. my daily alarm for him. Yeah. I always sneak into his house and <laughs> just gently creep into bed with him. I spoon him for about ten minutes. He gets down on his knees real yeah. slow, yeah. so he's like real close to me. Yeah, your, your wife just thinks I'm going to wake you up in that special way, <laughs> right? And then I just I jam a funnel in your mouth and fill it which, up with cinnamon. Which our wives know we do that yeah, by now. Course. They both accept that's going to happen. Look, it's been our routine since seventh grade. Exactly. Every yeah. day they we, know we, that we wake each other up that way. Right. Exactly. But I've I've shifted new year new me. <laughs> I've shifted and and to a new routine, which is just jamming a funnel in your mouth and filling it up with cinnamon. Right. Yeah. So we know we know what cinnamon is. Right. Um, we, but yeah, it's not. I mean, cinnamon's a prominent spice, like you said. Yeah, I just don't think it's as prominent in this as I would have expected. Exactly. I don't know that that's a bad thing, right? I, I don't know that it. I was really hoping for a lot of peanut butter flavoring in this. I was too, and it's delivering peanut slash peanut butter flavoring. Yeah, don't know how I feel about that yet. I'm still drinking it a little bit and thinking on that. Um, now that we drink it down a little bit, there is a little bit of lacing, just to note that. Yeah. But there's not a ton. I will say that I. I think it represents a brown ale pretty well, the base of the brown ale. You can still, the peanut butter is really overwhelming, but you can still get hints of the original Baracus brown ale. Sure. Which is a good serviceable brown ale. Seems to be, yeah. I, I have not had the regular brown ale, but yeah, it does, It does. you know, when you're talking about just widely available brown ales, I would say this one, it's been a little bit since I've had it, but probably the category I'd associate it more with is maybe a Moose Jewel than a Newcastle. Because I've always Fair thought Moostrel was a little better than Newcastle, actually. Oh, yeah, agreed. One. agreed. Well, maybe a lot better, actually. But um, I, I would say it's more like that. Like a little bit sweeter, not so dry. Yeah. Anything else to say? You want to go to ratings? or Ratings. Ratings. Okay, so for once, I don't have a name for this beer. I'm sure that's a tired bit. It's what I do. It's what we I'm are, about. We are all kind of tired of and it. I, we had a group me. meeting about it. Interns I, came to me and yeah. wanted a private meeting and said, can you talk to your co-host? I'm like... <laughs> Nothing I can do about him. I did fire them, just so you know. They fired the interns. They can't split us up like that. That's they true. can't come to me and try to separate us. Yeah, well, I appreciate I appreciate your loyalty <laughs> to me and to the exactly. beer party. We can't have that. We'll have to hire a new round of interns. We do. We we'll yes. have to go to Smoo over there and <laughs> pick us up a a, uh, a bunch of fresh faced young Republicans that wear sweaters over their shoulders. Of course, all with you their, can get is young Republicans. With these their days. loafers, yeah, yeah. And believe me, it's very much over there, the young Republican crowd. They all dress alike. It's weird. They're like yeah. all... It's kind of like clones. It's Very like, pale white uh, clones of each other. It's very strange. It's like that Nicole Kidman one uh, about all the Perfect Housewives oh, yeah. film. I can't remember the name of it now, but... Uh, Stepford Wives. Yeah, it's very Stepford Wives. Or remake, them. yeah. It's very... Yeah. yeah Stepford... They are all... It's, it's so strange when... This is a total off topic. When they walk into like Trinity Hall or whatever, right. you can immediately spot an SMU kid. Oh, yeah, of course. Because they yeah. all wear... They tend to wear baseball caps... Yes. Uh, or perfectly coiffed hair, and they all have like pastel shirts, khakis, right. loafers, and they wear. Some of them actually do wear sweaters tied over the shoulders. Unless SMU wants to sponsor the podcast, yes, and then they're a great diverse oh, university. Look, I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm just saying <laughs> you their just usual representation True. is a very diverse group of young white males that look <laughs> right, exactly, exactly like. Right, that all come from a lot of money. <laughs> Good point. Uh, but anyways. So back to the beer. The let's talk more SMU. <laughs> let's decry more colleges. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a good beer. Um, I think it represents the Baracus quite well. Um, I think that I was expecting for more cinnamon to be involved, maybe more allspice. I'm pleased to see that the hops kind of shine through somewhat, which, according to the BJCP standards, that there should be a little bit of a, a hoppiness there. So that's good. Um, I still prefer more of a true peanut butter flavor than uh, peanut shell flavor. 
or raw peanut flavor because this is definitely more raw peanuts. This is probably something like you could get at Sprouts, the organic I was say food more store. more raw peanut than peanut shell specifically. I haven't eaten a lot of shell, to be honest. I that's I toss the peanuts out and I just eat the shell. <laughs> okay. Well, you know better than me then. Preferably off the uh, off of the benches at uh, baseballs, base, at baseballs at baseball stadiums. <laughs> right. I just go to the old men and gather up their shells and funnel them <laughs> into my own mouth. Right. Um, but yeah, it's definitely more peanut shelly than peanut buttery. It's probably representative of like one of those stupid no salt organic peanut butters oh, that you yeah. have to mix it up with the oil. Right. Who wants that business? Nobody Kitty, wants that. Crap. I want some Jif. Right. Some uh, just real thick, you know, Peter Pan type peanut butter. Yeah, exactly. You want, uh, you want the sugar in there? Yeah. I just give me all of it. Just yeah. blah, 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 you know. Exactly. Down. Yep. I always make that noise when I'm eating peanut shells. Blah, blah. <laughs> right. Um, it's a good beer. But it's not my. I still prefer the no label over this, and I still think it could do with a touch more cinnamon, a touch more allspice. But it's a good beer, so I'm going to give this one three point seven five out of five. So for me, I definitely expected some peanut butter flavoring. The aroma was very peanut buttery. Yeah, that's I true. Mean, uh, that's that's the good. That was a good sign. The yeah. aroma was great. Oh yeah, the aroma was very delicious. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. Um, it was a little more raw peanutty than I expected, um, but you know, overall, I liked the no label. But I almost think it was maybe almost a little too sweet. Really? Um, and I thought the other one was not sweet enough. Oh, the no label, oh, yeah, yeah, the no label. And then the other one, uh, no label is definitely the peanut butter jelly beer. time was almost yeah. too not too raw. Yeah, it was too raw. It's well, um, this is definitely this, well balanced. Yeah. So to me, this is kind of like the. The three little bears and the just right. Yeah, uh, just you know, right. Yeah, Fair I enough. think this one's kind of just right. It has a good balance of a little bit of raw, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of allspice, a little bit of nutmeg. Yeah, uh, cinnamon probably could have been more prominent, but you know, I don't really feel like. I only feel like that's lacking because I saw it in the description. Yeah. As far as tasting it, if you were to just it call was, it a peanut butter beer, I think it would yeah. be fine. But as far as tasting it, I think, like you said, I think the cinnamon being there probably did bring out a little bit of the hot flavor. Yeah. Which you do not get. Any of the hot flavor in the mass-produced brown ales like right. uh, Moostrol or Newcastle or any of those. Right, you know? sure. So it's doing a better job of that. Uh, for me, I actually think for what this was supposed to be, I think it hit most everything uh, that it should have. So I'm actually going to give this one a pretty decent little rating of a 4.5 out of 5. Well, I, I went back to my, my team of lawyers. I reviewed your <laughs> arguments. We uh, We had... A uh, sixty-day conference about your arguments because <laughs> what we've been recording this entire time. I just paused it for sixty um, days straight. We've been yeah, recording. we've been here. Don't worry for sixty days straight. Right. My team of lawyers and I have come back and we agree with your arguments, and we're going to up our score to a four out of five because no, nice. you're right. You're right. It is the just right, uh, the well balanced, the Goldilocks uh, of beers, of uh, peanut butter beers, I guess. Of uh, peanut butter beers. I think exactly. I still like I said I still prefer the no label just because it's true Jiffy peanut Peter Pannery peanut butter. Sure, Peter Pannery. Um, Peter Panny. Peter Panny. <laughs> right. Peter Pan. <laughs> but that's just because I just love that flavor so much. Right. Sure. I mean, give me a whole jar of peanut butter and I'm content. You know right. I mean, it's normally how I end my nights. It's just <laughs> ensconce my, my mouth in peanut butter. Just, your hands are just covered in peanut I, butter and your face yeah. is all covered in it. I dip my ween in it just a little bit just to have a little late night loving from, yeah. from the dogs at the end of the night. Right. I was going to say. But, yeah. you know. But the rest of it all goes into my face and my mouth. Of course, of course. But you're right. It, it's a very well balanced beer. It's right in the middle. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a good representation of a peanut butter beer, and definitely way better than that p- total Pennsylvania disaster beer. Oh yeah. Giving us a final score of four point two five. Well, thanks for listening to yet another episode of Brew Bloods, an award winning edition of Brew Bloods. So many episodes uh, on site at Noble Ray Brewing Company. I would uh, say if you're ever down here. In downtown Dallas, in the design and the ever encroaching design district, <laughs> the ever expanding dominant design district. As soon as the fashionistas have their way, the medical district will no longer exist. <laughs> right, and it will all be fashion world down here. And if you guys could give us some feedback, let us know what you think uh, of the road show versus the studio show. Uh, yeah. If you guys hate this format, let us know. Um, if you love it, let us know. Yeah. Um, just be- you know, when you change something up, it's nice to have some fan feedback and yeah. just kind of get a vibe for what you guys think. Yeah, we haven't heard from anybody in a long time. It'd be good to get a little feedback. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm guessing we're just so good that nobody ever wants to communicate with us outside of Reddit great. who just pours on the hate. But Well, yeah. Uh, th- yeah, so thanks for listening to the show. Uh, Reddit will say they hate both versions. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they hate it either way. Uh, if you do us a favor, leave us a review on iTunes. We would appreciate it. 
Uh, check us out on the social networks, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the snaps, the old Snapchats. If you have any feedback on the show, you can email us at brewbloodshow at gmail.com or call us at 469-573-BEER. It's 469-573-2337. Or just tweet us at the mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, at BrewBloods on Twitter. <laughs> right. We're, I think exactly. we're uh, BrewBloods on just about every social network. So Pretty much. Blue, uh, only BrewBloods show on email, I think. Uh, BrewBloods show at gmail.com. That's Everything right. else is BrewBloods. All right. So for Noble Ray, for Dustin, I'm Mark. For Mark, I'm Dustin. Probst. Probst. Peanut butter probst. Is that a different kind of probst? It's it's uh, it, it's a probst with a, with a happy ending <laughs> at the end of the night. <laughs> there you go. On that note, we'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you.